<laughs> hey, and welcome back to Cruising Kiswa. In this video, we want to take you down the Shannon on our two week narrowboat holiday that we did last year in September. So, this journey consisted of going through 38 locks there and back, as well as travelling over 100 miles on the boat. We have the Shannon Iron navigation map in our hand, and we're going to retrace our steps or cruising route in our case. Uh, down the Shannon and show you a little bit about our journey and give some advice and some tips as we went down this you know completely blind and it's been a journey it definitely has definitely has without further ado shall we get on with the video I think we shall so we started our journey from Crom Castle and made our way down from the White Lock to the Narrow River the width was definitely not something we were used to even though our boat is built for narrow waterways the first leg of our journey was navigating through three locks before reaching a tranquil place called Hotton Shore, where we decided to moor for the night. We have to say, Hotton Shore is one of our favourite spots in the system. Even though we came across a few higher boats, we found that cruising in September was a lot quieter with more chance to finding a mooring we really, really liked. Kilty Barton Jetty. Oh, there we go. Kilty Barton. So that's where we're hoping to get to tonight. And to do that, we need to pass lock four, lock five, lock six, which is Ballon and Moor, and then lock seven, and then we'll be there. So there are some really lovely blackberries here, and I'm going to pick them before we head off for our journey. So there's something quite unique about the next jetty we're cruising to. Kilty Barn Jetty is completely detached from land. We had the spot to ourselves all evening until some hire boats with German tourists decided to join us, but they very kindly offered us some beer. Where are we headed off to, Josh? We are doing nine or 10 locks today, which yep. is Scary. We've done a few so far, but never as many in, in sort of a row like this. Yeah. Um, I'm going to Leitrim and then on to, to Drum, Drum Shambo. Drum Shambo, yes. We're so hoping probably. to get to the distillery yeah. in Drum Shambo and also to Lucky. So we'll take you on the journey today and hopefully everything goes well with the locks. Hopefully. <laughs> Deepest lock in the system. And we're going up. And after this, luckily, we're going down. So. Yes, it's the highest point, the summit. The summit. Are you, are you nervous? A wee bit. Let's have a look at it. Yeah. Now you got a bridge here, which is the first time we've seen a bridge in the front. In the front of a lock, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, because you, you can't walk across the gates, that's why. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, that is deep. <laughs> See you on the other side. So 
So we're almost there with the lock. We've been taking it really, really slow. It's quite hard to do with just two people. Um, the front bit keeps moving out, so we had to have it tied onto one of those um, bollards. So and Josh has to keep going up and down, basically. He's putting some fire liquid on the lock to get rid of all the fuel because it was full of fuel when we came in. Not ours, thankfully. Um, so yeah, just taking it really steady. You okay, Josh? Yeah. Yeah. We had to emergency stop it because um, the rope, front rope just kept coming out. So it's good that you have that. You can just stop it and then the water will eventually come out again. So we have to go up and down a little bit to get that sorted. Now, lucky it was one we were definitely dreading and looking back we could have done things a lot better to reduce the stress. Kesh Cargan was a little town right after Lockheed, which we ended up marrying on on our way back. After passing Kesh Carrigan, the Aran navigation becomes the Shannon navigation, where the red and white markers become the red and green markers. Although it's all one system, we really wish they would just pick one style and stick to it. This next part is really interesting as the canal appears to cut through solid rock. This is of course entirely man-made and was part of the restoration of the canal in the 80s. The system is now a symbolic link between the north and the south. Before reaching the little town of Leitrim, we passed through three locks in a row that I could walk between to operate. There's a small pub called Sheenmore Inn just between these locks that we stopped at for a quick pint before we were on our way. We stopped in Leitrim for the night before heading on to Loch Allen the next day. Three locks before Loch Allen are manual and manned by members of Waterways Ireland. The locks are quite old and only operate at certain times of the day. As you can see, the locks in the river are one of the most narrow on the system. So the likes of our boat is a perfect fit. The only thing is we wouldn't like to meet a boat on the opposite side with how overgrown it was. We didn't do the final lock to reach Loch Allen as we decided to stop at Acres Lake. This is where we moored before walking down to the Drum Sham Distillery.
Lockheed was a must on our list from fellow boaters' recommendations. And it did not disappoint. With the widest locking system to get to, Lockheed is a stunning spot with the castle and adventure park. This is where we met up with the lovely Sandra and her dogs who live full time on Narrowboat Golden Boys. We then journeyed together to Carrick and Shannon, which was our final destination for the trip. Ah, good video. Really good video, yeah. Thanks very much for watching guys. If you haven't already, please subscribe yeah. and drop us a like. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We would love to answer them and even try to make some content out of it as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.